Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Gran Turismo 6. Today is episode number 19. If you guys do want to keep up to date with what is going on on the Mechanic CG channel, then make sure to go down in the description and check out all of our social links. We've got Discord, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, and if you want to help support the channel, then make sure to hit that join button, that subscribe button, all that like button. And hopefully you guys do enjoy today's video. Right, so we are now doing the tour of America. And today what we're going to be doing is we are going to be taking the Camaro SS, which we haven't driven since, I think, the National B series. So probably about like 10, 15, well, 15 is a bit much. But about 10 episodes ago was the last time we drove this. And we're going to be driving it for the tour of America, starting off in Willow Springs. Then moving on to the Mazda Raceway, Laguna Seca, and then the Indianapolis Circuit. Let's go to Willow Springs. Uh, typical cars are Chevrolet Corvette Stingrays, GTOs, and Series 1 Supercharge. But based on the last few rounds where we've had like what look like really powerful cars, but they haven't won, I sort of have a little bit higher hopes for this. Um, we are obviously on Willow Springs. I think most of the American tracks are really short. Um, in this game, there isn't like a decent long length American track. Um, I'm pretty sure though, Indianap uh, not Indianapolis, um, Willow Springs, you can make it much longer than this with the other track. But 9.82 miles, we have a Corvette Z06. Can you not change? There we go. Uh, Challenger SRT, we've got a Fisker Karma EcoSport which is an electric car, and also the Tesla Roadster, another electric car there. Interesting, this is going to be fun. And here we are, Willow Springs. Camaro, time to shine. We put a uh, carbon fiber hood on this car as well. So uh, just to give it a little bit more of a mean look. I don't know whether it suits American muscle cars, but uh, I like it. Very good through here, through this corner. There's the Karma Eco Sport there. I think we're on traction control setting two at the moment. Trying not to crash into anyone today. Or, oh, because in the last episode, we took the wrong car. We took a KTM Crossbow. And that was a bit of a nightmare to wrestle around the corners. But uh, this car seems to be very good. Right, we have four more cars to overtake and three more laps to do it. Come on, come on, come on. Hard onto the brakes. We've got a Shelby. That, no, is that Shelby? No, it's just a normal Ford Mustang. We've got a Cadillac up ahead. It's a very nice car, that. And then a Corvette Z06. And we have gone wide. Perfect. Very well round those corners there. Ah, oh, this engine is just such a nice sound. Awesome. I think the fact is, this game would not be possible if it wasn't for Blu-ray. Like, they wouldn't be able to ship this game if it wasn't for Blu-ray. Like, Forza Motorsport 3, I think, was maybe a quarter of the size of this game. 
and that was on two discs. That had to be on two DVDs because the Xbox 360 was DVDs. They hadn't upgraded to Blu-ray yet. And Sony was like one of the main backers of Blu-ray back in the day. Obviously nowadays Xbox has Blu-ray. Um, PS4, PS5 is going to have it. Uh, I presume Series X is going to have Blu-ray. But Blu-ray just is like a disc that can store so much shit on it. Good shit. Good shit. Awesome. Little bit of a drift through there as well. Drifty man, my G. Come on, come on, come on. Awesome. I do think I picked the right car for this one this time. Yeah, I definitely picked the right car. Nine seconds ahead. I'm actually surprised this car makes the corners that well. And we've actually... Actually, I think between GT5 and GT6... Oh, gone wide there. I think between GT5 and GT6, the Camaro is the most driven car for us. Because we drove the Camaro in about three episodes of GT5 and we've done it in about three of GT6 this would probably be the third or the fourth interesting that's pretty cool but here we go coming up to the final corner now onto the main straight and I feel like it's actually time to show off. Finish the line backwards. <laughs> what the hell was that? That was terrible. It was supposed to go back and stop spinning and just reverse. Like a reverse J turn. But like going forwards and then going back. But it didn't work. 14 seconds ahead though. Very good distance there. Very good. Very good. Where's my money? There's a replay. Where's my money? Here's my money. Nine, uh, 29,000 credits. Very good there. Let's exit and go to Mazda Laguna Seca next. I do love the Laguna Seca. This is going to be fun to drive. Um, obviously, the Laguna Seca is a slightly longer track compared to... Um, Willow Springs ever so slightly I think this race will be just over because the last one was about nine this will be oh this is shorter I swear that's shorter interesting there is a C12 though um, I don't recognize the C12 but there is the Ford Shelby GT500 there as well um, not looking forward to going against those all right Camaro Time to shine. This is it. The race I've been looking forward to this entire recording session is the Mazda Laguna Seca. That's a Ford Focus RS. Obviously the Mark II one. Actually, that could be even the Mark I. I think that's actually the Mark I. Awesome. We've got a nice little uh, Chevrolet power wagon thing. I'm not very confident on American vehicles, like names and that. So if I do make a mistake, please don't kill me. But I know that is a Fisker Camry Eco Sport. It's a very weird looking car. It is a weird 
odd looking car. I don't know whether I like it. But then again, most cars you can't tell whether you like it until, like, you properly get into it, try it out. Especially in racing games and that. Now that is how you take the corkscrew. If you can drift on the exit of the corkscrew, you probably took it a little too aggressive. But style points for you. Nearly losing control there, though. Uh, this looks like the C12. It seems like a Celine. No? What car is it? What on earth is that? I thought from the side it was a Dodge. Initially, I thought it was a Celine, then a Dodge. Now I'm not even sure what it is. All I know is that it looks like a dead frog. Anything that looks weird with big eyes looks like a dead frog to me. It's sort of my description of cars that you will hear a lot. Oh, that looks like a dead frog. Yes. Oh. Just tap the Shelby's ass. This track is a slightly slower track than Willow Springs, so... Um, I mean, it might be shorter, but it definitely takes longer to do those laps. Perfect. Crap, 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 crap. Okay. Nice. Perfect. Nice, 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 nice. I'm liking this. I'm liking this. One minute thirty five. That is a fast time. I think we could go even later. I'm trying to push this first corner. I'm trying to push this first corner's braking zones as much as possible. Oh, that understeer. I have, um, obviously, between the last time we drove this car and to now, I have put in a stage two weight reduction. So it's not quite maximum, but it's not the smallest one. Um, I know stage one took off about 200 kilos and this one takes off about 350. So we're at about 1,400 kilos for this car's weight. So it's, it's not light, but it's not heavy either. It's a decent weight for it. Awesome. Perfect. Look at that. Did we get a faster lap time again? 134.4. Right, let's see. How far can we push this? Break now. Ah, oh, that was perfect. Pushing finally paid off. Come on, come on. Good, good, good. Very nice. This is now a 520 horsepower beast. Pulling around a very lightweight 1,400 kilo car. That used to be a 1.8 kilo, uh, 1.8 ton car. It's now 1.4 tons. It's crazy. Very nice there. Uh. 
and we push that corner more than we did before. Very good. Wow. I probably speak way too many praises on certain tracks. Like, at the end of the day, it is just a track, but like, this is one of the best tracks out there. No one is going to change my mind. Unless Gran Turismo comes up with a brand new original track that's amazing. Every single lap then, though, was uh, so much better. Let's just see. We obviously have to wait and see what uh, Gran Turismo 7 has to offer. Uh, see how well it's going to turn out. Um, but I am hoping it's going to turn out to be a very good game. But there we go. That is that one done. We are now moving on to Indianapolis. Which is going to be our third and final track of this American series. Again, same cars as before. I am not looking forward to that S Bend section. There is a S Bend section through there, and it looks very, very tight. Those corners there that you can see on the screen. And I'm even more worried about this. We got Vipers, we got CTSs, we've got a Mustang Boss, a Shelby GT500, Charger and Challenger SRT8, which is like, wow. A Corvette Grand Sport, Tesla. And we've got that horrible Chevrolet Prowler thing, or whatever it is. Ugh. Right, so this is a 10.42 mile race for this one. And there's the Prowler just behind us. Ugh, ugly looking thing. Oh, sorry, Focus. Should probably focus on the road more. Ha <laughs> ha! But um, that's not funny. <laughs> right, here we go. Nice. I still can't believe the one game. And I've never mentioned this game much. But there was one game that properly got me into, like, circuit racing. And that was Real Racing 3. Don't ask why. Because obviously that game's been out for nearly 10 years now. But, like, Real Racing 3 was the one that properly got me interested in circuit racing games. Obviously, I had Forza. I played that a lot. But it, I never really got into it properly until I played real racing and that was just fun there was like so many different modes and everything it was just so good obviously now it's like real microtransaction racing it's ridiculous you pay so much money for that game it's just all about microtransactions it's ridiculous i would rather pay five pound for real racing and have it as like a no microtransaction thing then have everything blocked behind a microtransaction wall personal preference aka I hate microtransactions simple this is going to be a long race though 1 minute 45.7 for the first lap Whoa! Not great. Not a great corner. Definitely not a corner I'm proud of today. It was all going so well. Awesome. Right, slow down, slow down. Come on, come on. I wonder what it's like to drive interior for this car. Oh my gosh, look how futuristic this looks. Like, it even looks futuristic for 2020. Yeah, that corner didn't go great. Yeah, maybe stick to this camera view. Might be a little bit better for us. Mm -hmm. 
very nice. And here we go, onto the final corner for the halfway mark. Oh, the understeer. Oh, that's crazy. Right, and onto the brakes. Probably should have stayed in second. Oh, well. Yeah, the Camaro's struggling. Unlike the KTM, which managed to keep optimal temperature, these tyres are overheating and we're only halfway through the race. At least they don't have that smoke effect every time you take a corner. Awesome. Why have they gotten rid of the Indianapolis logo up there? Why have they changed it to Gran Turismo? I'm pretty sure that's like breaching rules of like licensing. Jesus. That corner is ridiculous. Awesome. I think I am sticking with this view. It's the only view I can actually drive on. Any other view and it's just no. Perfect. Awesome. Very good corner there. GG. Oh, shit, shit, shit. Where's the corner going? There we go. 24 seconds ahead. That is crazy. This car isn't even anywhere near the max uh, performance point rating. Awesome. Go, go, go. I think this is the best we've taken this corner yet. That was very good there. Perfect. Come on, come on. Look at that. 141.387. It was those S bends that we were messing up. But there we go. 6 minutes 52.8. Oh, this video is going to be short. Oh, well. And there we go, 30,000 credits. Awesome. Tour of America, race number three completed. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below and subscribe. If you want to keep up to date on the Mechanic CG channel, then be sure to check out the description for our social links. We've got Twitter, Discord, and Instagram if you want to go check all of those out. Uh, if you want to help support the channel, make sure to hit that join button. Or you can go and grab yourself some merch. Either would mean the world to me. But thank you guys so much for watching. Peace.